Uh, good morning and welcome to the 12th meeting of Session 6 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Before we move to the first item on the agenda, I'd like to remind everyone present to switch their mobile phones to silent. The first item of business is consideration of an instrument subject to the affirmative procedure. It's the Health Protection Coronavirus Requirements Scotland Amendment No. 4, Regulations 2021. These regulations were laid yesterday and amend the COVID certification scheme so that it will be possible to access venues or events covered by the scheme by showing either proof of vaccination or exemption from the scheme as now or a recent negative test result. The Scottish Government considered it necessary to implement this change from next Monday the 6th of December. The Government has chosen to use the affirmative rather than the made affirmative on this occasion. The timescale does not, however, allow for the normal scrutiny the timescale for affirmative procedures. Uh, whilst uh, this committee has in the past called for the affirmative procedure to be used instead of the made affirmative procedure, this uh, should not be at the cost of proper parliamentary scrutiny. And while I was minded to agree to the timetable set out by the Scottish Government on this occasion, I am clear that this does not set a precedent for future regulations. While in the very limited timescale available, no points have been raised on the instrument, I reserve the right for the committee to look at the instrument again next week, should any issues subsequently be found. We could then write to the Scottish Government to highlight anything that, we may, well, that may emerge as a consequence of that. So, with that, I'd like to invite colleagues if they get any comments to make about the instrument. Mr. Simpson. Thanks very much, convener. Um, uh, it's obviously good, good that this has been dealt with under the affirmative procedure, um, in that it does allow Parliament some time, though not much has to be said, but some time to scrutinise uh, this, this regulation. Um, I would argue that we pro probably need more time, but something is better than nothing, um, which is the alternative that we, we could have been faced with. Uh, this, as you've said, um, would uh, es essentially it, it, it adds uh, an alternative uh, in, into an existing regulation. Um, we could call it the vaccine passport regulation. We all know about that. We've debated that in this committee and other committees. And this adds um, an alternative to that if you want to get into certain events. Uh, and that is, if I can just read from the regulation, uh, that, that you would have to take a lateral flow test, the results of which have been submitted through the NHS public reporting system. Now, most people, um, if they're going to take these tests, are doing so at home. They'll have a kit at home. Um, my problem with it is if it's to meet the policy intent uh, in the draft policy note of reducing the risk of transmission, of coronavirus, then it relies entirely on people being honest about that. Uh, because if you have uh, people who are absolutely desperate to get into a, an event, it could be a football match, it could be a concert, um, all they need to do is open their kit up, report that they've had a negative test result, whether or not they have, whether or not they've actually done the test, it's really easy just to say that you have done it and to say you've had a, a negative result and then 24 hours later go into the event. So it, it, it relies completely uh, on people being honest. And, and to be fair, the First Minister uh, has admitted that herself, uh, that this do, does rely on people being honest. So I'm not convinced that it meets the policy intent as stated here. Um, however, there's nothing uh, that this committee could report it on. Uh, I don't think it's badly drafted. Uh, I just don't think it will achieve what it sets out to achieve. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Uh, Mr. Hoy. If I could just I mean, uh, echo uh, what Mr. Simpson has said, just in, in welcoming the use of the affirmative albeit um, expedited. I think that means that, you know, effectively some scrutiny is, is better than, than no scrutiny at all. But I think, again, just worth recording for the record that the instrument, even although it's sound, will give effect to a policy which 
doesn't, in, in my view, meet the principal policy objective, which, if you look at it, is to say to reduce the risk of transmission of coronavirus by ensuring, it uses the word ensuring, that specified indoor public spaces where transmission risks are higher are used only, the word only, uh, by those who are vaccinated or can prove a record of, of a negative test. And I think we know that the vaccine passport scheme is flawed in that it doesn't prove the person who presents the passport is the person who was double vaccinated. And simultaneously now, it doesn't necessarily prove that the person has recorded a negative test. Mm. So I think the problem with the underlying scheme that this instrument gives further effect to is that uh, it relies upon goodwill and honesty rather than um, science or, or proof. So I think um, whilst on reporting grounds, I think it was reporting ground I would be that, that we would seek to do if we thought that the instrument was drafted in a way that was defective. I don't think the instrument is defective, hence why I don't think we're calling for it to be reported. But I certainly do think that the policy that it gives effect to and the scheme that is, is being applied is, is defective. And, and I would very much welcome us drawing that to the lead committee and then perhaps hearing what they have to say in relation to that before we look at the instrument further next week. OK, no, thank you, Mr Hoyt. Uh, Mr Sweeney, Mr Kidd. Thank you, Convener. Um, I think in the, given what established protocols have been to have a double vaccination proof um, and then that, that now combined with proof of a negative test is a reasonable procedure um, in practice. Um, it's been demonstrated in the last, you know, across Europe, you know, most other countries are operating similar protocols. Um, however, I understand there is a potential for people to deceive that pr procedure and that process. Um, so perhaps that is a matter for the lead committee to further consider how the aims of the legislation can be better achieved um, in the procedure. Uh, and perhaps there are opportunities to improve it, such as introducing some sort of liability for those who are found um, in the course of random inspection to have cheated the system. Um, and that could perhaps introduce a greater incentive to comply with the proper um, you know, honesty required from, from the, the, the community as a whole to protect each other. Okay, thank you, Mr Sweeney. Mr Kidd. Yep, um, thank you very much, Convener. I actually am agreeing with what has been said. I do understand there's a necessity um, to, if you're going to be coming forward with forms of legislation, in particular those which are going to be enacted in a daily a basis by members of the public, then you have to try and and um, make them straightforward. But you also have to try and um, and avoid the capability of them being um, uh, the rules being broken. I do understand what's being said. I think this is very important that um, we write to the the committee, um, the COVID committee, and actually raise this issue and ask that they will consider it. And then, what, after they've considered it and we can hear what they've said, we can bring it back here next week. Thank you. Okay, no, thank you for that. No, thank you, colleagues. So, so there are a couple of points. First of all, uh, on the actual drafting of the instrument. Um, as also has been discussed, uh, there are, uh, that's not uh, considered to be technically uh, deficient. Uh, this is the advice that we have received from uh, our uh, legal team. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll deal with that issue first. Uh, so taking that particular point into account, is the committee content with the instrument? Okay. Uh, on the, the other issues that have been raised by colleagues, um, I think that would be a sensible uh, procedure to, to follow would be to write to the COVID uh, committee. Raise the points that have been raised by uh, colleagues uh, today. Uh, and, and as I said in, in my uh, earlier comments, uh, I would reserve the right to uh, bring the the, the instrument back to the committee um, next week, if that's it's certainly something that, uh, that would be required. Is the committee content with that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Under agenda item number two, we're considering instruments subject to the negative procedure. No points have been raised on SSIs 2021, 420, 421 and 424. Is the committee content with these instruments? Yeah. Okay. Also, does the committee wish to welcome that SSI 2021-424 
rectifies errors in the public procurement agreement on government procurement, thresholds, etc. Amendment Scotland Regulations 2021, highlighted by the committee at its meeting on the 16th of November. Thank you. And under the final agenda item, we are considering an instrument not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised on SSI 2021-419. Is the committee content with this instrument? Yeah. Thank you. And with that, um, sorry, but the next uh, meeting of the committee will take place on Tuesday, the 7th of December. And with that, I will close the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>